Welcome to the Holy Yogi, where we help you find the guru inside of you. Hello, beautiful. Hello, handsome. How you doing today? And if no one has told you today that they love you, well, let me be the first. I love you. <laughs> Let's give some cyber hugs out to everybody. And also, get excited. Happy Martin Luther King Day. What a blessing. Here in 2019, we get to celebrate the Honorable Dr. Martin Luther King, the civil rights hero that sacrificed his life so that I could live mine and enjoy it. And because of that, and particularly within our community, we are truly at a place of feeling very blessed and more importantly, feeling challenged. It's clear that there's a lot of work that needs to be done. Police brutality is at a major high. Unfortunately, the life, black lives does and do matter. And we've got to get back into the business of really teaching the world how to love again, how to be at peace again, and how to be nonviolent again. And though Dr. Martin Luther King's dream has not been fulfilled, he has left a wonderful example of what we need to do to make sure that, that the dream continues to thrive, and more importantly, that we accomplish that dream in this century. So in order to be able to do that, one of the things that I did when I had my children, I raised them in a nonviolent way and fashion to try to live up to the tenets of nonviolence that Dr. Martin Luther King preached and died for. The least we could do since he sacrificed his life for us and the opportunity to be with and raise his family and also his children. We have to continue on with the wonderful challenge of being nonviolent. And so I raised my children that way. And to be honest with you, ladies and gentlemen, it is not ironic that neither one of my children have experienced any racial experience their whole entire life. Because quite frankly, we did not draw that type of toxic experience to us because we stayed in what? Light, love, peace, joy, and happiness. You got to be it in order to win it. If you don't do that, you will draw to you that type of experience. Prime example, one of the key things in order to be able to do that, there are seven tips I'm gonna share with you that we've lived by. Remember the number seven, that is not the lucky number, that is the spiritual number of complete prosperity and abundance. There's seven chakras in the body. There's seven systems in the body. There's seven colors of the rainbow. With the end of the rainbow is what? The pot of gold. So you follow these seven strategies that I have for you in order to live a nonviolent life and peace be unto you always. So let's start with number one. Don't kill your food. Yep, everybody, I'm going to challenge you and encourage you to live a nonviolent lifestyle, but not eating food that was killed. Unfortunately, when you eat food that has been killed, what happens? You're eating what? Death. You're eating murder. You are eating not just protein. You're eating anger. You're eating fear. You're eating, you're eating food that's at an animalistic level. Now, keep in mind, the kings in ancient times used to feed their warriors, their soldiers meat in order for them to go out and be able to be animalistic in fighting. And what they used to feed the spiritualists and the wise ones that would counsel and give truth to the king, they were vegetarians and they were vegans. Take a hint, and that was during ancient times before even Christ was even born. So keep that in proper perspective. So going to be having a dietary regime daily of vegan diet is an absolute opportunity to put you on the path of not drawing to you that vibrational frequency of death, of hate, of fear, of anger into your body to cause you to act upon it. 
that's number one so don't listen to violent music ladies and gentlemen violent music is very toxic music it promotes violent activity and actions from you gangster rap during that time there were a lot of gangs in la it contributed to a lot of gang violence a lot of gang activity and a lot of deaths unfortunately within the african american community in particular so i highly recommend not doing that matter of fact a young man who later changed his ways thank god became very spiritual but during his time when he was sharing his experience of when he was in a gang and when he did commit violence he used to listen to gangster rap music to get him all pumped up geared up to go out there and do negativity okay so think about that so what you want to do is you want to listen to music about love and about peace and about joy and about coming together <laughs> i wish i could remember that that wonderful oj song you know that was out back in the day that really made you feel happy and joyful oh don't worry be happy you know that song you know and um what was that song by um pharrell um I'm, I'm happy, happy. That song by Pharrell, that became a number one hit. Don't Worry, Be Happy became a number one hit because it made you feel good, it made you smile, and it made you want to spread love. So start listening to that type of music. So that's the type of music that I encourage my children to listen to. You know, my children were raised vegan. The, the next one is uh, don't watch violent movies. Don't do that. Oh, my goodness. Watching violent movies, what? It's real simple. It is going to promote you know, violence. Don't watch the, the TV shows on TV, you know, Law and & Order and, you know, a lot of those violent movies. That's going to perpetuate that violence. I know that when I go to the movies, I really got to meditate. <laughs> when I see, you know, you see in a movie that people are being murdered. You see 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 murders to the point where children have actually gotten desensitized, you know, from death. I mean, matter of fact, unfortunately, when I used to live in Sacramento, not Sacramento, when I lived in uh, Missouri City, um, Texas, right in that town, young teenagers had actually killed another teenagers because they wanted to know, their answer and their response was, just like zombies, was that they wanted to know and experience what death was like. At the expense of taking away, they had no reverence for life because they were totally desensitized buy it from constantly seeing death on a consistent basis and trivialized in movies. Another thing about what so many children are watching, don't allow your children, don't allow yourself, don't participate in violent games. Uh, what, Fortnite and I think there was um, Call of Duty. I mean, these were actually, I want you to understand, these actually war assimilated um, games were actual assimilated um, videos that the military created in order to teach the, the, the men and women of the military, of the armed forces on how to fight in actual crime uh, uh, infested um, um, warlike conduct. So they were actually being trained and now they're teaching everyday men and women and, and the like to, to set, assimilate violent activities. So you gotta understand they're actually training you to be violent and you will act upon it. My goodness, why is the crime rate going up? Why are all these you know crime movies that are being perpetuated? Unfortunately, I read just the other day, a precious little nine-year-old little boy, unfortunately, this is just recently, killed his seven-year-old cousin because they were playing with guns. And that's my next one. Do not allow or buy your children toy guns. Unfortunately, there was a young African-American youth that was in the park that was playing with a toy gun and a police officer mistook it for a real gun. And unfortunately, I think he was 11 or 12 years old. He's not here any longer because of that reason. Just for generic purposes, just for reality of prejudices and discrimination going on, no African-American youth 
should be partaking in any of the things I just now mentioned to you above. Because unfortunately, you are judged and you are sentenced. And unfortunately, you may die at the hands of it because you're assumed guilty before you're assumed innocent. We're not going to get into semantics. We're not going to get into the details. It's just the reality of the situation. And that's why I don't allow my children to partake of anything that has any inkling of any violent activity. So please, don't participate in toy. Don't you have toy guns or toy violent activities in your life? You gotta understand, if you're marinating in that type of energy, you're gonna draw it to you, ladies and gentlemen. Like attack, attracts like. That's why you wanna stay, stay consistently in love, 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 love. So you wanna watch love movie. Go watch a good love story movie. <laughs> watch those type of things that promotes love into your life. You know, listen to love songs, R&B groove love songs. You know, I love you and you love me. You know, type of music. And buy Love and Games, buy, I, I used to love the bubbles, you know, the bubble, blow your bubbles type of games, you know, things of that nature. Something that's gonna make a child smile. Keep them in light, keeping them love is the best thing for your children. If you raise your children in hate and things of that nature, they'll grow up that way and you wonder what happened, or more importantly, why did this happen to me? You know, parents that allow guns to be in your household to so-called protect the family, Unfortunately, the universe doesn't take it anyway. If you have a gun on inside your household, you have a greater propensity of violence being inflicted upon your family members at the hands of yourself. A lot of family members are saddened and things of that nature because of the fact that accidents, accidents, accidents. A father mistakenly killing his son or a mother mistakenly killing her daughter. It has happened numerous times because the gun was inside of the home. The next one, uh, number uh, six is, quite frankly, don't be physically violent towards anybody else. No matter what anybody says to you, no matter what anybody does to you, do not take violent acts into your own end. Immediately shift it and turn around and give that person a whole lot of love or don't even respond. I'm gonna discuss further with you where there was during a very quote unquote peaceful march in Washington DC the other day, my mother, my, my, my wonderful Native American friend, and I say that in a, in a very humble way, I don't know him personally, but he came between um, white youth against black youth and he brought his drum and he pound on it and asked Great Spirit to come and divert the attention from the violent act that happened between these two sects as they were marching to promote their peace and also their freedoms and the like. And so he was able to stop a major violent activity from happening, from happening by coming in with love and peace and bringing Great Spirit in the, in the middle of it. So that's how we do things. That's how, hey, you, you want love in a violent situation? Just give love in return. Don't fight fire with fire, because guess what? You both are going to get burned and unfortunately, maybe even killed. So we don't want that to happen to you. Last but not least, number seven. Number seven. And this is real simple. Number seven is don't use violent words. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. It's in the Bible. Psalms, pick I don't know the Psalms details. You probably know better than me. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Whatever the mind can conceive and believe it will achieve. If you're thinking those words, you will draw it to you too. Don't forget, it's not silently. If you're thinking violently, you will draw violence to you. Okay. Matter of fact, I give you an example. There was a young rapper. I never forget this as long as I live. His name, his rapper name was Murder. And I remember when I first heard it, I said, oh my God, know the metaphysics of it all. This young man, he's, he's, he's going to draw to himself a murderous type of experience. Lo and behold, two years later, after he came out with his rap and with his image and with his, he went to jail for what? Murder. And believe it or not, come finding out, he done, did not even commit the crime. 
But guess what? He did the time because that's what happens. The universe doesn't take it as a joke. It just It just gives you back what you put out. So because he was going around with the mur- with the word, imagine people yelling, murder, 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 hey, murder, murder, murder. And he's saying, I'm murder, I'm murder, I'm murder. Of course, you're going to draw that experience to you. And so now his life is over because of the fact he went around with that toxic name and environment. So don't use profanity. It promotes violence, etc. And don't try to be around any type of bad words. Create what? bad experience. I told, I, I shared with you before that when you say a word, it's, it's like it has a boomerang effect. It goes out in order for you to hear the sound, it comes back to you. So as you're saying those negative words, you know, they're coming back to you. They're hitting you. You're, you're going to experience that. And unfortunately, if you marinate in that, then violence begets violence. It will come upon you. So let's go over that because I really want you to get that because it's going to be a lifelong lesson for you to learn. You abstain from these type of experiences. And more importantly, what do you do? You counteract that violence with what? Love. With peace, 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 namaste. And so that's why we live a violent-free life. That's why we live a peaceful life. And that's why I don't worry about the so-called wars out there. Because you know why, ladies and gentlemen? In my world, there is no war. Remember, your words create your world. So if you're having warlike con- conduct and you're using profanity in a warlike way and, and you wonder why you're having negative experiences happen to you, hello, <laughs> you're creating it and you're manifesting it, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, you put that energy out there, poof, it's going to come back to you. So now do the complete opposite. You put that energy out there of love on a consistent basis. And more importantly, do it when you don't want to do it. Do it when it's the hardest time to do it. It's so easy that when when other people inflict violence and hate words on you, you come back with violence and hate words. I mean, it's so easy. And it's going to exasperate the situation. It's just going to get worse. See, the true gift of a true healer and a true yogi understands that they use transformation when you are are being hit with hate, you what? Give back love. So I'm going to end with this. And I'm going to repeat from one to seven. Matter of fact, I haven't got a list here because I want to get it right for you. Seven tips on how to live a nonviolent life like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. did. And you won't have that experience. But let me share this with you. Martin, Dr. Martin Luther King, he got his nonviolence idea act from Mahatma Gandhi. Mahatma Gandhi was able to transform the world of India and push the British away by nonviolently confronting their takeover of his country. And the British returned the country back to him. And it was done completely without any war. So Love does win, ladies and gentlemen, over war. Mahatma Gandhi proved that it does happen. And one of the things people don't know and realize that when Mahatma Gandhi was murdered, when he was shot, the last words that he spoke to the man that shot him was, I love you. You see, he knew he took it into his next lifetime experience, love, with his last words because he transformed the energy of the people, transformed the energy of the world by giving out love, even during his very last breath, so that he can continue to cyclically bring it in into his next lifetime. Because remember, we are mortal souls. We don't die. We just transform. So in order to transform other people, the thing that you need to do is transform yourself first. Be the change, Mahatma Gandhi said this too, that you want to see in the world. If you want more love to come to you, then you must give more love to the world. So here are the things that, the non-violent things that you want to do. Do a vegan diet. Don't kill for your food. Don't listen to violent music. 
do listen to love music because <laughs> love what makes the world go round don't watch violent movies ladies and gentlemen watch love movies lots of love stories and that fairy tale oh they make me feel so good inside don't play violent video games play games of sports games and the like and have fun doing that basketball nba 2019 2k something <laughs> Uh, you know, um, don't play violent, don't allow your kids or yourself to play with violent toys, you know, laser guns, you know, don't do those type of things, refrain from doing that, and, and go bowling, or, you know, play hockey, or, you know, the basketball game, or, or arcade games of uh, roll the pin, you know, uh, you know, do something of that nature, do something with tennis, <laughs> you know, don't play those tidy games or allow or, or, or paintball, you know, allow to simulate that, you know, ride a, a doom buggy, you know, in the sands or something of that nature or ski, ski, ski lifting, go skiing, <laughs> something of that nature, nonviolent toys and games. Uh, don't physically attack anyone. Give someone a hug. Or dance off. I remember when I was watching a wonderful movie. Um, I forgot. Um, Daddy's home or home daddy or dad home. One of, one of those wonderful movies. Um, and basically, you know, they got in the middle floor and they danced it off. You know, that's what you do. To have a dance off. You know, instead of becoming <clears throat> instead of becoming physical, <clears throat> you want to do that. Okay. And last but not least, uh, <clears throat> no violent words. Counteract those words with love. Give love, give love, love. I love you. When someone says, calls you a name, I love you too. <laughs> Do that and, and laugh about it because it truly is funny. And remember that it truly is our responsibility to do the hardest thing in life. The hardest thing in life is meet hate with love. That's a true tramp champion. That's a true hero, and that's a true holy yogi. And remember, you were created in the likeness and image of God. You're God's mini me, mini God. <laughs> so act like you know and do the right thing. Have a great day, everybody. Remember, you can live the seven tips on how to live a nonviolent life every day. Because Dr. Martin Luther King sacrificed his life so that you could live the life of your dreams. Bye-bye for now and have a great day. Love you. Oh, and don't forget, like, comment, subscribe. We'd love to hear from you. Oh, and hit the notifications so when next time we come up with an awesome video, it's going to make you feel fantastic inside and have a phenomenal day. We want to make sure that you live your life. And namaste, peace, hetapu, bye-bye for now. Ah, we got to do our, our wonderful minute meditation at the end. Dear Heavenly Spirit, as we continue to pray for the upliftment of Dr. Martin Luther King's dream of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness for all God's children, and not to be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of our character, for that dream to come true, let us all live in peace, light, and love. Amen. Ashe. Be blessed, everyone.